First, convert your sound file into the .wav format if you haven't done so already. Audacity is a good program to do this. Now that you've got it loaded up, export it as a WAV. After finding your recently converted WAV file, the default folder is documents slash audacity. Copy it. We'll need it for later. Navigate to your half of Alex add-on directory. The default is half of Alex content HLVR add-ons and whatever you named your add-on. This is an example of what you would see in your add-on folder. Start by deleting the sounds, sound events, and resource manifest folders. If you do not have these folders, do not worry. It means you created your add-on before the latest update. Now, create a new sounds folder and paste in your .wav. Now we're going to want to replace those two folders we deleted earlier. Navigate to HLVR add-ons, add on new sound, and copy these two folders. Paste these two folders in your own add-on folder. We'll start by editing the sound events folder. Double click it and edit this file. Replace audio new sound with the name of your add-on. Now that the file is renamed, open it and edit it with your favorite text editor. Replace audio.addonnewsound demo with whatever you'd like. This is what will come up when you search for your sound file in the editor. Replace sound underscore sound add demo 01 with whatever you named your .wav file, in my case Toad. Ignore the fact that the file extension is VSMD. The engine will take care of this for us. We're also going to want to change the file name. So in this case, replace audio new sound with what have you named your add-on. Also open up this file in your text editor. All we have to do here is replace audio new sound with whatever our add-on name is. In this case, tutorial. Don't forget to save your files. We are now done with editing files. We can now close the text editor. Now open up your workshop tools. Select your add-on and launch tools. In the asset browser, first search for your sound file. Here we can see our .wav. It's automatically named toad.vsnd as said it earlier. Right click this file and click full recompile. Now navigate to your sound events file. We can type our add-on name followed by underscore and then sound events. Right click this file and once again click full recompile. Now we're going to want to test if your sound is there. Create a new sound event point entity and click alt enter to access its properties. Click the magnifying glass and type the name we defined earlier. In this case, test.audio. And as you can see, it is here. Double click it to select. It plays. Don't forget to give your sound entity a name. Use the block tool to create a new block. Select it with the select tool and click Ctrl Alt T at the same time. This will turn it into a trigger. Select the trigger and click Alt Enter to access its properties. Click on the Outputs tab and then click Add. Under my output named, type On Start Touched. Now enter the name of your sound entity. And then under via this input, type Start Sound. We can now test that the sound works by building the map. We can see that the sound works. If the audio you are using is for a custom soundtrack or music, you do not have to worry about baking the reverb. However, if you are using the sound as a sound effect, you would want to bake the paths and reverb. To do this, go to Steam Audio, Bake Paths, and Bake Reverb. 